welcome back to the workshop. Now in this video we're going to build a Moxon voice using these two screws and these nice big cast iron wheels. Now this particular Moxon voice kit was sent to me by a company uh, WDS Components. They're based in the UK and they actually have a very interesting website. That's why I kind of agreed to do this video. Now I'm not being paid and it's not a sponsored video. They were just sent to me so I have to let you know you guys know up front that these were sent to me. I didn't buy them myself but they are providing Mox and Voice kits now on their website. But they do loads of different stuff like machine components, casters, uh, rams, struts, handles, everything you need. If any of you guys out there are doing up an old woodworking machine or an old table saw or something like that and you're looking for component parts or even if something has broke on one of your machines they have all the parts there on that site so it's quite an interesting site and it's one I recommend you check out guys because there's lots of interesting components on there that uh, you can use to replace or repair any of your machines and also they have a kind of a woodworking section now which is growing and uh, they're actually starting to sell things like this like mox and voice kits so let me get you in for a closer look guys we'll see what we're going to do I'll give you a close-up of the components and uh, yeah we'll just kick on and make a moxon voice okay so very quickly let's have a quick look at the components we're going to be using now this is like I said was sent to me by uh, WDS components I didn't pay for them so I have to let you guys know that as I said already but uh, this is what they sent as a moxon voice kit so you see you have the nut, two nuts uh, two heavy duty washers and we have the two screws and our two handles. Now these screws are actually a little bit long for a Moxon voice, they're 500 millimeters in length. Uh, 250 to 300 millimeters is generally good for a Moxon voice. Again, it depends how thick you wanna make it and how big you wanna make it, but I think I can cut this in half and get my two screws out of it. And you can see we have some nice big heavy duty uh, cast iron wheels. And these guys really spin up and there's a nice bit of weight to them and they really spin on these screws. So uh, yeah, really nice indeed. And definitely encourage you guys to check out WDS Components. The website is pretty cool, like I said. If you're looking for any parts or for any woodworking machines, those guys seem to have everything there. So it'll be an interesting one for you guys. So very quickly guys, there's just a little sheet they sent me over. So you can see that's the website, WDS Components. You can see all the kind of different stuff that they do. And they have a vast range of stuff. So all the screws, handles, uh, clamps, everything from making jigs, casters, loads of different stuff and like bristol handles and all that kind of stuff which tend to break on machines so whether it's on your lathe or your pillar drill or you want some screw handles for your bandsaw things like that they have it all on that side so yeah if you're doing any work on a woodworking machine check them out okay so for making the jaws of our moxon voice i have some maple here this is two inch by eight inch or 50 mil by 200 millimeter and I'm not sure the exact length, but there's a lot in it. And uh, it's a nice big heavy duty board, a bit of uh, bark on this end. So we'll be cutting that off and uh, we get our two pieces for our two jaws out of this. Now, <laughs> at current timber prices, believe it or not, it was cheaper to buy this than it was to buy a uh, sheet of plywood, which is quite hilarious. Eight inch by two inch maple board, cheaper than plywood at the minute. Go figure. Okay, so let's start dimensioning up this board and start preparing it. Now I just want to cut off this bad end and then we can work from there. So that's our very first thing we need to do. So let's get on and do it. I love the smell of maple when you cut into it. It just has a lovely sweet smell to it. Okay, now that we have our bad end off, we can start dimensioning up this and preparing our rough timber. Now, I'm gonna keep my front jaws 600 millimeters. That's roughly 24 inches or two foot in length. And we need to keep our back jaws then six inches bigger than that. So it'll be uh, three inches wider either side for the parts that come out that we can clamp it to our bench. It'll all make perfect sense in a minute. So like I said, this is gonna be 600 millimeters in length. My next one then will be 750 in length. That's the back jaws. And that will give us a 75 millimeter or three inch overhang on either side. So it's gonna be a nice, big, meaty mox and voice, which is exactly what I want. I'm gonna make this a nice heavy duty one. Now the board itself is just over 200 millimeters uh, in width. 
that's just over eight inches. That's a little bit um, on the big side for a Moxon voice. You could make it that size if you wanted. I'm gonna take it down to about six inches or 150 millimeters. So I think that's a good size for a Moxon voice and for this uh, length as well. So like I said, eight inches is a little bit big. So four to six inches tends to be good. And uh, like I said, it's nice and heavy, two inch um, or 50 millimeters maple. So let's get this cut up, dimensioned up, and uh, yeah, let's just get on it. Okay, there's our front jaws. There are our back jaws. Like I said, it's three inches wider either side. So if you guys have watched my other Moxon voice build where I've made it completely from timber with a cam lock system, you can see there's the overhangs. That's what you clamp to your bench. So uh, that's why we need to leave it, the back jaws, be that little bit wider. Again, I have a full build series on this if you're interested in making yourself a cam lock version of a Moxon voice. But this one we're gonna be using the screws. Now, let's get this to the planar thicknesser and get this dimensioned up. Okay, so we have our two jaws. We have a face side, a face edge, and an opposite face side established on the joint or planar, planar thickness or whatever you want to call it. And now I'm just going to rip them down to the correct size. So I'm going to take a cut on with the track saw, rip them down to about six inches or 150 millimeters, and then I'll just take a light pass back through the uh, thickness or, or planar, wherever you are in the world, just to make sure that we have two perfectly parallel edges. So without further ado, let's just do that. Okay, so there are our two jaws now dimensioned up. So it's 50 millimeters or two inches in thickness and 150 mil or six inches in width. And then we're 600 mil for the first one and 750 for the back one. So 24 inches by 30 inches roughly in Imperial. Now, what I've done is I've marked the center. So I have the two centers of these two pieces lined up. Then I've come in three inches or 75 mil from the end of our first jaws and square that line across. If you make a mistake now, if you, if you measure in three inches here and then measure in three inches from this end, obviously the holes won't line up. This is for drilling our holes through now for our screws. So that's those two center points lined up on either end. And then what I've done for the front is I've measured five millimeters either side of this line. So just under a quarter of an inch offset either side of this line. And I've scribed that down the face. Hopefully you guys can see it there. And I've measured halfway up this board. Now, the reason for that is I want an elongated hole in the front. I have a 20 mil bit. Those threads are 20 mil in width. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill one hole here and one hole here, five millimeters offset center either side. And then we're going to join those holes up. So I want like an oval, shaped hole in the front so that the screw can move left or right. That means I can tilt the jaws of the Moxon voice if I want to clamp wedged shape uh, or tapered pieces of timber. Now you don't have to do this. You could just drill a hole straight through the center, straight through the center of the piece behind it and have it a straight in and out Moxon voice. But we might as well make it as versatile as we can make it. So that's what we're gonna do. So we have to take this now and drill this out on the pillar drill and we can't use this one to mark out that one. That's why we need to mark them out when they're both together just like this. And that way we will ensure everything is lined up. So it's a case of two holes straight through this and straight through this and we'll join them up. Okay, so ready to go. So I have a hole here and an offset hole here. Let's do it. Thank you. 
Okay guys, so that's what we're left with after we offset the center of our 20 mil hole, five millimeters either side of our center mark. And now I'm just gonna take a chisel and I'm gonna flatten out that ridge that I have between these two holes. Nice and simple, we just chop that down with the chisel and that will just allow our screw then, our 20 mil screw to move either side on this face, which will allow us to tilt the face, like I said, for tapered pieces. And here's one of the large washers, and that just covers those holes. So that'll sit on the front behind the wheel. Now, nice and simple, let's get on chopping. Okay, that's what it should look like when we're finished. And again, it's just a nice, simple idea. It's essentially, you drop your threaded rod through and then it can tilt on the front, which allows you to tilt the jaws in relation to the back jaws. So you can offset them either side, that's all. So just a nice little uh, added function. Again, you don't have to do it. You can have your jaws go straight in and out and just drill a straight hole through it, but I recommend you do it that way. Now, let's get on and sort out the back jaws. Okay, our next job then is to drill our back jaws. So in between the jaw faces, that's where we want to drill our next hole. So to the front of our back jaws, we want to set in the nut now. We're going to set that guy in there. So I'm going to drill with a 25 mil bit first, the depth of this nut, and then we'll finish the hole through with the 20 mil bit. And then what we'll do is we'll mark out our nut, we'll chisel this in and set that into the face. And then on the back of our moxon voice, we will have a washer and a lock nut for the tread. And that's how we lock it in place. So let's get on and do that. Okay guys, so I've just set my depth stop, the depth of my nut. So it's a 25 mil hole here and on the other end and then finish it out with a 20 mil bit. So nice and simple. Let's just get on and do that. Okay, so after doing that, that's what we should end up with. So we have a 25 mil hole of depth of the nut and a 20 mil bit to take our tread all the way through. Now let's mark out for recessing the nut into this. Okay, so I have my treaded bar all the way through, my bolt in other words, and I have my nut on now and uh, I can now mark around this. So what I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna make sure that I keep these two uh, parallel with these edges. So, you know, you don't have to do it, but you know, you might as well be particular about it when you're doing it. So that's okay there. Now I'm just gonna knife around this guy. Is that still on camera? It is, okay. So I just wanna knife around this and then I'm gonna chisel it out. Okay, same on the other side then. And we can start chiseling. Okay, so now it's just a case of work to my knife lines and try and be as neat as I possibly can. Just eyeing the chisel, making sure I'm keeping it perpendicular. And so it's just a case of take your time. Okay guys, the nuts are in place and I've just put in the two screws. So they're just protruding out the back, just enough to get a nut and washer on the back. Now, like I said, this particular set comes with 500 millimeter screws. And uh, I think that's a little bit long. I'm not gonna be clamping anything that big in my moxon voice. I think a moxon voice with an opening of six inches should be plenty. Um, I can't envisage me putting anything more than six inches uh, of thickness in my moxon voice. Now that's famous last words as they say. It might arise that I might need to clamp eight inches, but um, I think six inches is, is gonna be more than enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut 
these screws now back to 300 millimeters and that will give me plenty of an opening uh, with my Moxon voice and it will keep it nice and compact enough and also functional. So that's a good length and I do believe WDS, the components uh, where I got this, they do do a 300 millimeter set as well. So just check that out on the site if you're looking at getting this kit. So without further ado, let's cut these screws. Okay, I have the screw in the vise, just have it clamped with two pieces of wood just so I don't damage the treads. I have a nut on it so that I can tread that off over the section that I'm gonna cut just to make sure we have good end treads and then I'm gonna fold it off. And it's gonna be a case of hacksaw because I left my grinder on site. So uh, this is a case of elbow grease. <laughs> Lovely. And uh, my voice is not very well fixed on, but we can sort that. Now it's just a case of tread the nut back over the cut end, make sure everything is hunky dory. Hit that with a touch of a foil, and I'll do the same with the other one. Okay, guys, I have the Mox and Voice just roughly assembled. We still have to finish and shape this yet, but you can see the idea. So, the treads or the screws are all the way through. We have a nut and a washer on the back that will lock down our tread, so we'll tighten that down. That'll be the last thing we do when we disassemble this and reassemble it. We'll tighten it down and that will lock this nut against the nut that we have inside in here and it will lock our tread in place and uh, our handles and stuff around the front. Let me give you a look at the front of this and then we begin to shape it and then it's a case of sand it and a bit, little bit of finish. Okay, so there you go. You can see we have our front on now. There is our hand wheels. You can see they really spin nice. They have a nice bit of uh, weight to them like I said already. So just a washer in behind them and you can see the advantage of the elongated hole now, even though it's hidden by the washer, you can tilt the voice. It just means you can clamp tapered pieces a little bit more easy, that's all. And uh, it gives a little bit of play in the front of the voice as well. So that's exactly what you want to make it more functional. Now we need to shape this, sand it, like I said. So we don't want to clamp it like this because these can get in our way. So we want to take a notch out of both sides. So just like this moxing voice here, I want to cut it down and so our hole fasts, our clamps will grab this guy here and it's out of the way of where we're working. Now, this voice I uh, left rounded, I'm going to keep this one square looking. I like the kind of big kind of square look on this and I'm going to put a chamfer on the front of the voice just for when you're using the saw. Because it's such a thick front jaw, if I want to keep my piece uh, clamped nice and tight, kind of close to the jaw and I want to get out of it with my saw here. I just want to put a tapered or chamfer front on it. So let's get on and do that. Okay, so we have it marked out. This is the section we want to cut out here. So I just marked a line. It's the width of the front jaws from this line to this line here. And then I just came up 60 mil and squared that in. So we're going to take out this section here and that's what we're going to clamp. Now for the front jaw, all I done was take my marking gauge at 20 millimeters, scribe the line here and scribe the line down here. And then I'm going to match that chamfer from this 20 mil line to this 20 mil line. I'm going to do that with the hand plane. So let's get on and cut this. I'm going to chop this on the bandsaw and then we'll finish it off with the chisels and planes. Hey guys, I'm just working in the uh, chamfer on the front set of drawers again just to get me that angle to, um, if I'm ever cutting like half blind or half lap dovetail, dovetails, things like that. Uh, it's just to get the saw angle in because it's a nice thick jaw, like I said. And I'm just working it down with the hand plane. Now, it's quite a big chamfer. So the best approach to this is to chamfer here and then chamfer here and then join the two of them up, that kind of thing. You kind of get a multi-faceted uh, face on it. Uh, it kind of rounds it over a small bit, but it has that kind of handmade look and that handmade feel to it. So I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Again, it's not a perfect angle from um, marking gauge line to marking gauge line. It's slightly rounded, but like I said, it's kind of a handmade feel and a handmade look, which is always nice in my opinion. So we're just there now. I'm just kind of getting it down to the last uh, marking gauge line on this side. Then it's just a case I hit this with a bit of sandpaper and uh, it's only time for finish. Okay guys, we are more or less finished up. So I sanded it to 120 grit. The inside of the jaws I left up to 80 grit just to leave them a little bit more grippy. 
one coat of Danish oil on it front and back. I'll add a few more coats maybe to the front, but no more to the jaws of the vise, just to keep a nice little bit of grip inside in there. So there's not much more to it than that, just assemble it. Now you could add some leather. I have a nice piece of leather here. Um, if I feel like I need it later on, I might add this to the vise, but for now I'm just gonna leave it as the wood because my last Moxon vise works quite well, just the wood on wood. But again, a piece of leather or some cork is a good idea uh, for extra grip on these uh, voices. But for now, like I said, we're gonna leave it as the wood. So that's it, now it's only a case of get this thing assembled and try it out, let's do it. Okay guys, there we are, it's all back assembled, it's in place and it is working beautifully. It's locked onto the bench with the hole fast. Now that's the best way of um, locking on your Moxon voice. If you have uh, dog holes in your bench, then the hole fast is the quickest and easiest and it makes everything good and solid. It's essentially a part of this table now, or this workbench. I have aprons on mine, which is why I don't wanna use clamps. If you don't have aprons, clamps will do the exact same job. Um, no problem, but like I say, hold fasts are a nice, easy solution for holding on your moxon voice. So let me get you in for a closer look. I'll show you it in operation. I okay, have a quick close up so you can see it in operation. So if I take this Sapili board and drop it in, nice and easy to lock that in place. And these really do clamp your material. So they get a serious grip, these mocks and voices. And that is welded to the bench now. So that's good and solid. So if you're working on the end of your board, if you're doing dovetails around that, these are absolutely ideal. And the, one of the biggest advantages of a mocks and voice is the fact that you can drop your material straight through it. So you can work on really long boards. So if you're working on, say, the end of a cabinet or uh, end of a chest of drawer or a bookshelf or the shelf itself, and it's really long, you want to put dovetails or whatever on the end of it, you can absolutely do that. That's the beauty of them. Another really nice feature is that they're completely mobile. So it's easy for me just to pull this on and off my bench and put it away. And I have my workspace back. And it's a very cost effective way of getting yourself a really nice voice. Um, you can even clamp boards on their side. So you have a way of working at the, on the end of a board, on the side of a board. Now all you need is a way of working on the face of the board, which is what your workbench is for. But this one voice is really all you need um, if you're doing hand tool woodworking. A Moxon voice is, does it all. And because we left the uh, for front holes elongated, we now have a voice face that we can tilt. So we can tilt these jaws and we can work on tapered pieces and clamp tapered pieces at any angle we want. So very nice. Okay guys, so there we go. One Mox and Voice complete. I have to say I really enjoyed that. I'm trying to get back into the hand tool woodworking and get a few more projects for you guys. A few bit of nice joinery. Um, just been very busy at the minute, but this is going to inspire me to get back into it. Um, having a Mox and Voice like this uh, makes hand tool woodworking really, really enjoyable. It's a fantastic voice. And definitely if you're into your woodworking, I highly recommend you get yourself one of these guys because they're so easy to use. They're nice and portable. You can put them away, disassemble, them. They don't take up too much space. So if you're in a small workshop, if you've got a small workbench, even if you're working inside in your house, if you have a little space inside in your house, then a Moxon voice is ideal because as long as you can clamp this to something, you can use it as a voice and you can work on the sides and the ends of your boards. So they're absolutely fantastic. They use them for hundreds of years for a reason. And uh, this is a nice kit. It's really robust, nice big heavy wheels or heavy wheel handles, which I really like. So thanks again to the guys over at WDS Components for sending me these. Now it's not sponsored and they're not paying me to say any of this, but 
It's a site I checked out myself, which is why I don't mind um, giving the guys a shout out. They have everything you need over there to build jigs or to fix your woodworking machines, all those little parts that are very hard to find, such as the Bristol handles, the threaded knobs, all that kind of stuff, the casters, the feet, rollers, everything you would need if you bought an old machine and you wanted to do it up. They have all that kind of stuff over there too. So it's definitely one to check out, guys. And uh, yeah, thanks again. So hopefully you've enjoyed it, guys. Hopefully you've got something out of this. Hopefully it inspires you guys to get out making. And like I said, if you're into the hand tool woodworking, definitely put yourself together and mox and voice. You will not regret it, believe you me. So that's it, guys. Comments and questions below, as always. And you want to know, any questions you have, anything you would do different, just let me know in the comment section. And and uh, thanks as always to all the guys over on Patreon who continue to support the channel. Uh, your support is very much appreciated, guys. And uh, if you want to support what I do here, links to my Patreon will be below and my PayPal as well. If you ever fancy buying me a beer or a cup of coffee, that would be much appreciated too, guys. So uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to get out of here now. It's quite warm. New Mox and Voice. Some hand tool projects coming up, guys. You will see this in future videos. I'm looking forward to getting back into the joinery. It's my favorite part of woodworking. And uh, yeah, I have some nice ideas coming up. So I shall see you in the future videos. I'm going to get out of here now. It's quite warm. I think it's time for a cold beer. So take it easy.